Wednesday, January 12th. Welcome to the Just Baseball Show. I'm Peter Apple. That's Arm Layton. And the first big story that we have to talk about is what happened with Carlos Correa. We're also going to address Trevor Story's injury, as well as talk about a couple of one-year deals. But I want to start with this. This seems fishy to me, Arm. It just seems weird. And I was talking about it in the group chat. I went down a Carlos Correa rabbit hole because I just don't get it. And I want you to either help me put more tinfoil hats on, or I want you to relieve some of my stress because for some reason, I can't figure this one out. You know, we talk about it a lot, but I can't figure this one out. First, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Good to be back with you here. Um, I'll be back in New York with you soon, but uh, just good to be back on the podcast where it feels like we're we're really in that rhythm again. You know, we were getting through the holidays and everything, but now I feel like we're kind of back in the Just Baseball Show rhythm. Uh, it's been really fun kind of getting back into it, and we got so much on the horizon, man. So I'm just glad, first and foremost, that this Correa shit is over because yes. I don't know if you saw my, my, my tweet from, I think it was earlier this week where I was just like, I can't take this anymore. Just, just, just end it because it was like, we're going in freaking circles, man. You know, it just, it was like twins are out. Twins are in Mets are out. Mets are are in Mets confident. Mets not confident twins back in. I was just like, let me know when it's all over. I can't do this anymore. And finally it's over. And I'm happy he's with the twins. I I want, I want to spread the superstars around. So I'm pumped. I agree. It's good for the lower market teams. Now the twins aren't this tiny, small market team, but it's good to see superstars on other teams besides on the coast, right in the middle of America. But so just a quick spark notes, Carlos Correa signs a 13 year deal, 335 million with the San Francisco giants giants. They cancel their press conference and they say, we are having concerns with his medicals and we want to restructure in at the 11th hour, Steve Cohen, or excuse me, Scott Boris says to Steve Cohen, giants have cold feet. Let's make a deal. Mets say yes. And Steve Cohen then comes out and says, This is the final piece. This is what puts us over the top. Okay. So this is what he thinks can make them official world series contenders. They already were, but this is what makes them the number one team in baseball. But then cold feet ensues. You have one of the best tweets. I think of the off season where renowned doctors agree with renowned doctors. But then again, Steve Cohen, they have their issues with this. They go back and look at the medicals. And then the twins, they re-engage. And they say, all right, we're going to give Carlos Correa a six-year, $200 million offer. And the Mets, they come in with six years for 157 Now, there's incentives on both sides. The twins deal can go up to $275 million, And a, the Mets deal can also go to 315 million for that 12 years but there's incentives there is a yearly physical that he has to do and the only guaranteed money that the Mets gave him was 157.5 million the Twins gave him 200 million so Correa says I am betting on myself because there's plenty in, of incentives with the Twins I can get up to 275 million but I'm going to take the extra what 33 million that's guaranteed mm-hmm. that makes all the sense in the world why it's fishy is not about Carlos Correa Why I think it's fishy is, or it feels weird to me, is why didn't Steve Cohen match that offer? And a couple of things went through my head. It's not like they haven't given tons of money before. It's not like money has ever been an object. Steve Cohen is worth $26 billion. George or uh, Hal Steinbrenner is worth about four or five billion. Like he's so much worth more than any other owner in, in Major League Baseball. So he looks at the Carlos Correa deal and he says, instead of matching the Twins offer, instead of going five for $230 million, they come up short after giving Edwin Diaz five years for a reliever, after giving a 41-year-old Justin Verlander $40 million. I just don't understand why they didn't match it. Because of his comments earlier, because of how big the pockets are, it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, you know, and, and this is we talked about it a little bit before we recorded, but it's just to play the other side, play the devil's advocate here because I I totally hear where you're coming from, and and money really, you know, is is not a thing for Steve Cohen. We've always everyone talks about that. We, we've you know, it's well documented, but. At the same time, you know they're about to hit that next threshold, the Steve Cohen tax, where if, if they sign Correa, 
they're probably not adding another superstar after that. I mean, then the team would be hit with like a billion dollar tax at that point. If they went, wanted to go after an Otani or somebody else next year, it would be, it would be a, a literal joke. Uh, so I do wonder how much they started to just look at, you know, hey, we have Brett Beatty here, who's a really good third base prospect. We still have Escobar if, if Beatty isn't ready for whatever reason, but I really like Beatty. And on top of that, you know, hey, we can go and attack free agency next year. Yeah, now Devers is locked up, but there's going to be a lot of really, really good free agents on the market next year. And you're not, you know, attaching yourself to someone who really could taper off in a few years. I think it's very clear that many doctors, as you mentioned my tweet earlier, that many renowned doctors agree with each other that there are some major red flags here. And I do wonder with, with Steve Cohen if if it really just became too much risk for him. And I know that that money at the end of the day is is you know a drop in the bucket to him, but you don't get to where you are as Steve Cohen by making, you know, careless investments. And if he thinks it's a careless investment, maybe that was enough for him, Peter. Like maybe that was the first time where money was a thing to Steve Cohen. And he just said, you know what? You can have Correa this time, twins. He means more to you. Uh, we were going to put him at third base anyways. Like we don't need him that bad. We'll, we'll spend that money elsewhere when the right opportunity comes. We're not going to spend just to spend. That That seems like a feasible alternative to me too. I totally get that. And I thought that too. You know, Machado is a free agent next year. They can go get a third baseman actual if third they baseman. feel that third baseman is the key. But they made him an offer. Yeah. They gave him six for 157 with these incentives to get up to 315. And then if I'm Steve Cohen and money doesn't matter to me, because like that 157.5 to $200 million, that money doesn't really matter. If you're at zero versus 200, if you don't make an offer, then I understand. But you made the offer. And then if I'm Steve Cohen and I say, well, yes, my doctors, I understand what you're saying. It is definitely a risk. But their doctors who signed Carlos Correa initially, the twins doctors said it's okay to give him $200 million over six years, guaranteed. I'm Steve Cohen. We're already willing to do 157. If the team that had him previously is willing to go to 200, what's stopping me from just matching it and having Correa make the decision? So that's this where is I'm at. I'm part. so confused. <laughs> so I think the only reason why the Mets made this offer was – because they had a lot of protection within it. And there was a report that came out that basically the Mets proposed deal. And this is when, you know, they kept saying like there's language that Boris and Correa don't like from the Mets and that's where they're apart. I believe that one of the things in that language or like one of the aspects of it was that the deal that the Mets proposed would allow the team to void the contract at any year if he failed a physical by their doctor's standards. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. from that lens, that that is basically a team option every year. Like it, it's so messy at that point, and I wonder, you know, for the Mets, that was the only way they were going to offer that much, right? Is if they have their asses covered every single year, whereas the Twins, those options vest, right? So like if he has going into twenty twenty four. Uh, or excuse me, going into 2029, which is the first option out of this contract, if he has 575 plate appearances, option vests automatically. Doesn't even matter about the physical, I'm pretty sure. Then 2030, it's even less plate appearances. It's 550, and it goes down from there about a handful of plate appearances each year. So that gives Correa a little bit more protection. Hey, if I'm on the field, I'm going to be able to guarantee myself that money. And it's not going to be left, left up in some gray area to a doctor who could be working against me here and, and really just decide that, hey, I'm not fit to play. And it kind of fits what we've been saying about Correa, which was last last year, he looked great. Yet doctors are saying, eh, I and don't know if before. he's good to go. And the year before, exactly. and 2020. Exactly. exactly. So if he's on the field, option vests, no matter how bad the physical looks, if he has 550 plate appearances, this guy plays the next year at $25 million. And that option is, is vesting automatically. And it's not up to some gray area doctor uh, to decide whether he is able to play at a high level or not. Uh, so ultimately I think the twins, you know, kind of gambled a bit more, but on the flip side, you know, I think it's surprising to me to kind of circle back and, and tie a bow onto your point. It's surprising to me that the twins are more willing to take a chance here than the Mets 
You talk about the financial side that would make the Mets more willing to roll the dice, but guess what? The Twins are way more desperate team-wise, and I think that's what ended up putting them over the top. They need Correa way more, and I think they're willing to take this risk uh, to to see if if you know he's going to be able to hold up long enough. They got their best player back, and, and that, it's that simple for them. I think you make a lot of really good points, and it's making me you know reconsider my position. I just didn't really have a position. I was just more it's- perplexed and confused why the Mets, if six for two hundred was the was the tip of the iceberg and six for 157 was the most that the Mets could do. Like what was stopping them from potentially doing five for 250? But the more you break down the deal, that six year deal for 157 doesn't really seem like a six year deal for 157, right? No, they get out whenever they wanted. That's I think where, where I, where I lost confusion there because what I was looking at the deal Six for 157, six versus 200, they're not created equal. No. I know the money isn't even equal, but they're not created equal in terms of the clauses. So if Correa fails that first physical, or let's say he has 400 plate appearances and goes down with a hamstring injury, then the Mets can say, yeah, we don't want you anymore. And then he's back on the market again. So I wasn't considering Correa's decision. I totally understood Correa's decision, more guaranteed money. I saw Mets fans being like, well, why wouldn't Correa bet on himself? That's so dumb. Like, of course he's not going to. He just did it. He just did it. Like, of course he's not going to do that again. It's way more money guaranteed. And while the the Twins won't compete to the level that the Mets are, you never know. And I'm going to take play shortstop. He gets, to, he play gets to play shortstop. shortstop. Yeah, that yeah. was just, I saw that on Mets Twitter. And I, that was the one where I was like, that's dumb. But where I thought to myself, well, when you break it down on a per year basis, it wasn't really a six year, $157 million deal. That was the point. Was, yeah, it was almost like a team option every single year, which is, which is not fair to Correa at that point. You know, you got to find that balance. And I think the Twins... I think this skews in favor of Correa. It does. But I think the Twins found that balance here. And you just put out a really good article on JustBaseball.com. I had the privilege of editing, which is your over-under win totals for the year and kind of just your leans on each team. And we we had to we had to put a, a hold on it for a minute because as you were writing it, we had Correa sign with the Twins. So I know what you said in that article, again, because I edited it, but – how much does this change the twins for you now? Because obviously they really needed that, that another glue guy, another star in this lineup. I, how much better do you feel about the twins? I feel like I'm usually the the bullish guy on them to a fault last year. You were, you were right with, with how harsh you were on them. And uh, we'll, we'll never forget that Jack two years ago, picked them to make the playoffs and they were the worst team ever. Uh, but you know, where do you stand now? With, no, no. With- he had the making the world series. Oh, he had them making the World Series. <laughs> yeah, That's what so. it was. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So yeah, my my outlook on the Twins is is more optimistic than it has in previous years, and it's really on the backs of starting pitching. Like when I do these over under win totals, um, I really look at teams who, because Phillies and Padres, for example. I took their under on their regular season win total. And it's not because I don't believe that they can't make the playoffs or I don't believe that they can make a deep playoff run. It's just over 162 on a game by game basis. Do you have starting pitchers that I trust that can win you ball games? Because when I gamble on an individual game, the starting pitchers as the most important position of yeah. how you're supposed to handicap a game. Yeah. And that's why I highly recommend downloading prize picks in the episode description. If you use code just baseball or code just gridiron, you get a full 100 percent deposit match and while i'm just starting to do over under win totals for the teams price picks doesn't have that but what they do have is season-long player props so i'm going to be writing articles on that and deploying them on prize picks so if you want some free money to play with you deposit 10 you get 10 you deposit 50 you get 50 you deposit 100 you get 100 and you can play around because i will be deploying plenty on prize picks but of course not gambling advice but back to the twins twins conversation I'm excited about their rotation this year, and I haven't been excited about the rotation in a long time. So yeah. while they've had great offensive players, it's a lot of the three true outcome guys. They lead the league in home runs, but they lead the league in strikeouts. And that's probably going to happen again. You know, they won 78 games with Carlos Correa, but now they get Kenta Maeda back. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you get Tyler Malley for a full season, Sonny Gray, Joe Ryan, zero twins players, pitchers, threw 150 innings last year. Joe Ryan was close, but a lot of these guys were banged up. If they can give you a lot more consistency, if they can throw more innings, I like the Twins. Now, do I think the Twins make the playoffs? No. At 77 and a half, that line is too low, even without Carlos Correa, because I believe in the pitching. Now, it's not a confident bet because it's all about health. Like the team like the Rays, they have this great starting pitching, but prone to injury. Glass now. Rasmussen, Springs. These guys haven't been healthy their entire careers. We also don't know about McClanahan, but we know that they have studs in the, in the pipeline. We know that they have other guys that they can plug in. The Twins don't. That's yeah. why it's an interesting conversation when we're talking about an over under win total. No, absolutely, and, and and you know the the one sixty two game season is basically as you were saying like a war of attrition, right? Because when you're taking over under win totals, you got to be looking at okay, what's the worst case scenario here? If a couple guys go down. Does this bet still have a chance or am I riding this this over bet on the fact that Joe Ryan has to be healthy all year? And, and, you know, most likely for the Twins to succeed, Joe Ryan, Sonny Gray and Tyler Miley have to be healthy. But as you mentioned, Kent Maeda back, Bailey Ober being back like, yeah, he's not the most exciting player in the world, but that's a guy that's going to give you quality starts. And innings. again, in a 162 game season, you'd be shocked at how many teams, especially teams that are, are expected to win around 77 to 80 games, start a bunch of random dudes for a handful of games each year. And those are, you know, almost scheduled losses, as I like to call them. So you now have a way of kind of hedging those scheduled losses with the twins here. And then you mentioned the three true outcome guys, and they they have a lot of those and they added another one in Joey Gallo, but that's why I'm so happy to see Carlos Correa back because he's yep. not a three true outcome guy. He no. doesn't strike out much. He puts the ball in play. He's a, just a good hitter. And even if he's not going to hit you 30 home runs, even if he's closer to 20 to 25, they just needed a guy that's a consistent 275, 350, 460 hitter, which Correa pretty much has been for most of his career. And that's just what I think is so huge for them. With Arias and Correa now at the top, that gives them so much more balance. I'm really interested to see what kind of leap Miranda makes and and some of these other guys. But it's really about health, like you said. If they can get 100-plus games out of Buxton, this team can make some noise. But I I loved your pick of the over. It was 77.5. Is that what it was? 77.5. You assume that line is going to move, but at that price. And, you know, I checked the Caesars Sportsbook because that's the only book that lines are available. It was still at 77.5, and and I'm still considering it. I do find it interesting. Like, for example, just going back to – um, variance and starting pitching and why that's so important. Like your game 114. And are you more confident in Bailey Ober against the Royals or signing of Vince Velasquez or a <laughs> Chichi Gonzalez, like guys like that, the journeyman types, no disrespect to them, but having that starting pitching depth could get you a win or a loss, which is really important, but you'd expect the twins to beat the Royals. But a lot of these things happen in, in the, uh, in the regular season. For example, the Cardinals was the most interesting line. They were at 89 and a half after being a 92, 93 win team last year. Why? Look at the starting pitching. Wainwright, Michaelis, 35, 42 years old for Wainwright. They both have birthdays in August. Then you have Jordan Montgomery, who is solid, but then Flaherty and Matt's like, I can't rely on that. That's why I'm leading towards the under, even though the Cardinals seem like easily one of the best teams in baseball. They can be a 90-win team, but over a 162-game schedule, that starting pitching matters so much. Playoffs, not as much. You need three dogs. Yep. And the Cardinals, once they get in the playoffs, they can do it. But it's yeah. those fourth and fifth starters, and the Twins have that this year, which they haven't in previous years. Dylan Bundy goes from their second-best pitcher to like not on the team anymore. Yeah. That's how it is now with the Twins. So I'm excited for them. Are they better than the Guardians? No. But the White Sox, they have their problems too. It's funny. You talk about the White Sox. Like I was going to say, basically the, the rule of thumb is, is there a scenario where Dallas Keuchel has to start a game for you? And if that is a scenario, then then I'm probably not betting on your overwind total. And Dallas Keuchel started for the White Sox. He started for the Diamondbacks. And he started for the Rangers last year. And I believe those are all teams that – underachieved when it comes to their projections last season, except for maybe the D backs might've topped it. But other than that, you know, that those were all teams that did not meet their expectations. So 
I'm way more excited about the twins. Um, I, I think they're going to need some young guys to perform and that's where it's going to be interesting. And I'm, I'm very eager to see what they get out of Royce Lewis, because that's somebody that I, you just got to root for. You got to pull for at this point. That poor guy torn his ACL twice. He's had so many different issues and injuries, but it was really showing us what he's capable of. If he can come back at some point in the, in the first half of the season and even just fill in and center field shortstop, whatever, uh, that's going to be a nice boost for them as well. And they made some other quiet additions also, but I'm excited. It just makes the, it makes the league more balanced. I, like I, I'm not a big fan of, of seeing certain teams just load all the way up. It's, it's fun to see, you know, teams be really good, but the, the Correa to the Mets was kind of where I drew the line. And I'm just like, eh, I, I'd rather him go somewhere else. So I'm happy with this one. The only reason selfishly I wanted Cray on the Mets, we live in New York, going to City Field, going to Yankee yeah. Stadium, being able to yeah. see that laser show. That would have been awesome. Mm-hmm. But I am very happy that he is on the Twins. And for a couple of reasons, everything that you said, but also they needed a shortstop. Like they don't want to put Jorge Polanco at short. He's their second base. Kyle Farmer. Yeah, exactly. Like that, I hope was not the poll. Oh, it was going to be the plan if they didn't get Carlos Correa. But not only is Cray a great signing, it's in a position of need for the Twins. Now you look up the middle defense with Polanco, then Correa and Buxton and Setter, if he can stay healthy. That's incredibly important in this day and age, especially with the shift getting banned.